Welcome to the Soft Life with Sadi Baddies. Sadi Baddies is the antidote to mental health stigma, and this podcast is hosted by yours truly, Priscilla O. Adjman. We are a virtual sanctuary centering Black and multiracial people, and we prioritize the mental and emotional nourishment that is the foundation of collective healing in our communities. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to the Soft Life Baddies. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend and a great week. And happy March. This is our first episode of March. And I love March for very for a lot of different reasons. But also because as of Friday, I am officially a fiance. And I'm sitting here with my fiance. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I could not wait to say fiance. I'm just very excited and super, super happy with everything that happened this weekend. Um, My fiance proposed to me and it was a surprise proposal. It was beautiful. I couldn't have asked for a better proposal. And as you can hear, I'm super, super, super excited. And I am also just really grateful for all the love and support from the Sadie Baddies community and listeners of The Soft Life. For those who follow me on my personal account, you have seen and heard the news. So thank you so much for all of your love and support and your well wishes. And yes, entering my fiance era officially. Also, last week, we had a wonderful opportunity to go to the Emmy Colay event. Um, Emmy Colay is a black owned, a black woman owned brand. Um, and it is beautiful. The founder, Giara, she was also in attendance and she did an amazing demo with us. Um, it was at a beautiful space in New York City. And I love Emmy Colet. I love their mission. I love the makeup. I love everything that they represent. So it was really, really great to go to the event in person last week. And I'm just looking forward to creating more of these um, collaborations and events with uh, folks in the Saudi Baddies community, in our network, and with brands like Emmy Colet um, that really align with our mission. We were also featured on the Fostered podcast with Angel Foster. And Angel and I actually met through the podcast um, through another episode that we shared. And so thank you, Angel, for having me on the Fostered podcast. In our episode, we talked about sober curiosity dealing with anxiety, asking for help. And we really dive deep into what is a soft life actually? What does that actually mean? Um, I love this conversation. There's also a video component to it if you prefer to watch it um, on Angel's channel. So that will be linked in the show notes. And we also were featured in another podcast, which we love, which is Chats with Cat, And we were really getting real honest and upfront about dealing with mental health and embracing our flop era. So I love that episode too. It was really in depth and I just love that conversation. And of course, today we have our virtual event with the Webby Awards. Um, It is called It's Up to Us in Building an Inclusive Internet. And we're going to be diving deep on all things inclusivity on the internet and how products and digital communities like Sadie Baddies can respond and adapt. And this is going to be taking place in just a few hours. So if you catch this episode early, you might be able to still RSVP, but it is happening today at 12 p.m. Eastern time um, today, March 7th. And I'm so excited to be on this panel discussion along with two other panelists that are representing Omidyar Network and Google, as well as the Webby Awards. So I'm very excited to be on this panel discussion I'm definitely going to be looping you all in, our listeners, um, more into all of the things that happen. You know, sometimes I don't even mention it on the podcast, but your girl is busy, okay? Your girl is booked and busy, and Sadie Baddies is booked and busy too. So we have a lot going on for this year, and I definitely want to share more about what we're doing behind the scenes because we have a lot in store for this year. And of course, I cannot go without mentioning that the Soft Life podcast, the one that you're listening to right now, was highlighted as number one in the new era category of Apple Podcasts in honor of Women's History Month. So clap for yourselves. (laughs) I'm clapping for y'all because we could not have done this without you. I mean, that is huge. 
and just you know we're getting so many we're getting so many more um people that are t- downloading and tuning into the soft life podcast because of this amazing um feature for women's history month so i'm very very excited and happy to have so many new listeners and you know you don't have to listen to any of the episodes in chronological order you can listen to them whenever you want but i think that all of these conversations are so beautiful in so many different ways and with the guest interviews from last season as well as solo episodes no matter where you drop in and tune in I'm sure that you're going to find something to take away and you're going to keep coming back so yeah I'm so excited for March March is one of my favorite months I feel like it just brings a new energy and as we know spring is the real new year so I feel like it is a new year for me for sure all right, and let's let's talk about last week's episode real quick. Last week's episode was about high functioning depression and it hit home for so many of you because a lot of us have realized that although we might be able to carry the load well, that doesn't mean that the load is not heavy. And um if you or someone you know could use a listen to, and talk more about depression especially as black people or people of color, download last week's episode and share your thoughts with us. And also just know that there's always resources listed in the show notes for that episode and every episode, which will help you expand the conversation and continue the conversation online and offline. So this week's episode is all about perfectionism. And I want to talk about perfectionism because I think it's a word that's thrown around a lot. And sometimes we don't even realize like there's different types of perfectionism. And how is perfectionism, how is perfectionism maybe helpful for us in some situations and how is it harmful? So let's start from the top. What is perfectionism or who is a perfectionist? Perfectionism is actually a personality trait in which a person strives tirelessly for flawlessness and high performance standards. Perfectionism is more than paying attention to detail or doing your best. It is driven primarily by the internal pressures that we face, the pressures that we put on ourselves, such as the fear of failure or harsh judgment by yourself or from other people. Perfectionism can regardless can affect us regardless of gender, race, education, or your professional background. I myself was a, I, I would consider myself a recovering perfectionist. I used to be such a perfectionist when I was younger and throughout my teens and my early, my early twenties. And I can kind of say now I'm really not a perfectionist anymore. Um, there's very few things that I'll get hung up on because life has a way of not only I wouldn't say just humbling you, but I think life has a way of showing you that there's more than one way to be successful. There's one, there's more than one way to accomplish your goals. There's one, there's more than one way to show up in the world. And one thing that I realized as being a perfectionist in the past, it was very draining. It exhausted me because instead of just pacing myself or instead of embracing the failures or the mistakes and the slip ups that I would make in life, I would beat myself up so much. And that really created an unhealthy relationship with myself and for other people. So as someone who struggled with perfectionism, and I'm talking about like, since I was four years old, I, I, hated coloring outside the lines. And if I did color outside the lines, I would rip out the page paper and start over again, y'all. Like that it was, you know, since I was a kid and it carried on throughout my my adult life. And, you know, you get to a point where you're like, this can't, this cannot be the way I'm supposed to function. I I there has to be a way that allows me to have more grace, more softness, and more ease in my life without being so rigid on myself. So let's talk about the three types of perfectionism, because as I'm looking into, you know, one thing about me, I will if I want to understand something or if I want to get better at something, one of the first things I'll do is start researching it and trying to understand it from a knowledge point of view. So when talking about perfectionism and looking into how I can unlearn perfectionism, I realize and actually 
discovered that there's three different types. So the first is self-oriented perfectionism. And this is a type of perfectionism that imposes an unrealistic desire to be perfect on yourself. So this might be the way that you look. This might be your weight. This might be the way that you dress. It could be also how you perform um, at work or your relationships. You might be someone who's just really, really, really hard on yourself. Or you might be even losing sleep or not eating enough because you are trying to be perfect. So perfectionism that's self-oriented is all about the actions that you place on yourself to be perfect. And I think this is probably the most common type of perfectionism. This was definitely the type of perfectionism that I was dealing with for a very long time. And I no longer subscribe to that way of life. (laughs) I just, I can't, I don't have time for that. And I've learned how to embrace softness and grace and ease into my life so that I can still be ambitious. I can still be goal oriented without killing myself. Um, so the other type of perfectionism is other oriented perfectionism, which means that you're imposing unrealistic standards of perfection on other people. This is most commonly seen in relationships. So if you have a partner and you and your partner are completely different from each other, you know, maybe one of you is more type A and the other, the other one is type more type B and maybe your partner is not as neat as you or clean, or maybe your partner doesn't remember certain details that you remember. And of course, there's a level of that that's acceptable, I think, in any relationship before it starts to become one-sided. However, I think that that other-oriented perfectionism is you projecting your standards of perfectionism onto other people. So especially you say, for example, if you have children or you have a a large family, the chances of that everybody in your family is going to be exactly how you want them to be or be the person that you want them to be is very unrealistic. And same goes with our relationships or our friendships. And sometimes putting that pressure on our friends or our loved ones, it's unfair. It causes such an imbalance of how they can show up as their full selves and how they can learn and adapt and grow and be comfortable around you. So other oriented perfectionism um, affects us mostly in our relationships, in our families, in our friendships. And then lastly, we have socially prescribed perfectionism, which involves perceiving unrealistic expectations of perfectionism of perfectionism from others. So Similar to other oriented perfectionism, um, this is more of a larger scale. So this might be instead of just one person, this might be a whole group of people it might be, you know, the people that you go to school with or it could be your community or just larger social groups um, and imposing or perceiving unrealistic expectations of perfection from these groups and from these spaces, these community spaces. One thing that we know is that community is not perfect. And even the Saudi Baddies community, I love y'all to death. But we're not perfect. There's going to be times where you disagree with me. There's going to be times where I disagree with you. There's going to be moments in which maybe something isn't, it's not resonating with you. But that doesn't necessarily mean that either of us is wrong or either of us is 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 not, you know, allowed to take up space or not allowed to share our thoughts or our feelings. So uh, releasing that expectation of perfectionism from other people and from a larger social setting, that allows for learning opportunities and it allows people to to learn from you and to hear you and vice versa without it just being a single point of view or a single perspective. I'm going to grab some tea, y'all. And I'm drinking turmeric ginger tea right now. It's so good. Okay, so perfectionism is not a mental illness within itself. Um, Just want to keep that in mind. 
However, it is a common factor in other mental health disorders such as anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder, also known as OCD. So there's some signs that you might be struggling with perfectionism. And some of those signs include craving external approval or validation above internal validation. And I think this is something that is easy to pick out when we're younger, especially because we don't have that intuition that's fully developed yet. And that's totally normal. But constantly craving external validation and approval above your own internal is definitely a sign or could be a sign that you might be dealing with or struggling with perfectionism. And we'll also talk about external versus internal validation in another episode because I think we could really dive deep into this one. So some other signs that you might be struggling with perfectionism include being an all or nothing type of person and being very black and white about all the decisions and choices that you make in life. Another sign is feedback and getting feedback or criticism makes you very defensive. So if you're somebody that if you're getting a performance review, for example, at work and your manager is telling you all of the things that, you know, maybe you need to improve on and taking everything with a grain of salt, right, depending on your relationship with your manager. But if you have a pretty like, you know, decent relationship with your manager, your supervisor, and they're giving you feedback and all your feedback that you're getting is you become defensive of it that could be a sign that you are not open to constructive criticism and you're not open to someone telling you objectively hey these are the areas I think you're doing well and these are the areas that you might need to improve in addition to that being highly critical and judgmental of other people that I think is an overlooked sign of perfectionism because when I think about it the people that I know in my life or have known in my life because I wouldn't necessarily say this is currently true but the people that I've known in my life that were perfectionists were also very very critical and very judgmental of other people so they're very quick to point out other people's flaws they're very quick to point out other people's mistakes and failures and they're the type of person to go on Instagram Look up somebody on Instagram and zoom into their face and try to see if this person has edited their photos or pick out flaws in other people, which is just completely unhealthy to begin with. But on that level, on that scale, they're projecting that perfectionism that's within them onto other people. One major sign that you might be dealing with struggling with perfectionism is procrastination and procrastination not because you are overwhelmed or you know maybe you just don't have enough time in the day I'm talking about the procrastination that happens because of fear of failure and that fear of failure that limits you and prevents you from making any progress that is the fear of failure that is going to set set you back unless you learn how to approach failure from a place of love and compassion When you feel intense guilt, when you do make a mistake, that also could be a sign that you might be struggling with perfectionism, especially because making mistakes is completely normal. It's a part of the human experience. But feeling that shame and guilt after making a mistake could be a sign that you're not giving yourself any grace whatsoever and you're not giving yourself room to grow. Just the same way you wouldn't yell at a baby for learning how to walk for the first time. And even though we're not babies, we're not children, I think still approaching ourselves with the same compassion and the same type of care consideration sometimes as we would speak to our inner child with is a really powerful way to learn how to deal with perfectionism in a gentle way. And that also, you know, includes talking to yourself with kindness and talk to talking to yourself in a way that's loving and compassionate. And lastly, one one sign that you might be struggling with perfectionism is if you can't accept a compliment or you're somebody to always defer compliments or downplay compliments or you can you are not able to acknowledge your achievements because you always think you could have done better, baby, maybe it's time to explore the concept of struggling with 
perfectionism because if you're somebody that never is able to accept a compliment, you never able to acknowledge your accomplishments and your achievements. That that might be an indicator that you don't feel worthy enough. You don't feel like what you do is good enough for yourself or for anyone else. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. So if somebody compliments you or you know, shows you love or or gives you a compliment or if you've achieved something, own it and embrace it and and feel good in that in that space because you're deserving of that. So let's talk about some ways that perfectionism um, could be good or bad. So first question is, can perfectionism be a good thing? I think yes and no. I think that perfectionism and perfection there's really no such thing as perfect, right? I mean, we might see things that look perfect um, to ourselves. Like, you know, we might see a pair of shoes that we think are perfect. We might see a piece, a, a work of art that is perfect to us or flawless. Or we might, you know, see someone that does their makeup and it's completely flawless. It's perfect. It couldn't be any better. But, you know, perfectionists don't don't always see that you know, there's not necessarily such thing as perfection to begin with. And they're, they start to set unrealistic standards for themselves. So perfectionists usually fall into two different categories, adaptive and maladaptive. So adaptive being being able to embrace um, change, being able to pivot, being able to be accepting of life's ups and downs. And adaptive is also on a healthier scale of how we deal with failure, how we do with deal with life in general. So these are some of the traits of someone who is an adaptive perfectionist. Um, so some of those traits or some of those uh, characteristics include setting high goals, being somebody who is accomplished and ambitious, having high standards, having a good work ethic, being achievement oriented or goal oriented, desiring growth and your personal development, enjoying and embracing challenges, being a good problem solver, and overall having a healthy self-esteem. So an adaptive, somebody who might be a bit of a perfectionist, but is an adaptive perfectionist, they're able to take the good qualities of perfectionism because at the end of the day, being a perfectionist, it's not necessarily, it's not, it's not the fact that you're striving for better, right? I, I would consider myself to be, that's why I always say that I'm like a recovering perfectionist because I know the connotation of perfectionist is not always a good thing. Being a being somebody that's goal oriented or being somebody that desires growth or is open to challenges, that's that's great. That that's what creates business owners. That's what creates creatives. That's what is people who are able to embrace the challenges that come with their with their with life in general. Those are the people that are able to start business and take take risk. And I think that those traits are really important. Um and I also think that being able to set realistic goals and again we'll talk about setting goals in another episode but you know there's a there's actually a method and a formula to setting goals and I think embracing um having a work ethic and having some and having a trait which makes you reliable and allows people to trust you and trust that you're gonna get shit done those are good qualities there's actually nothing wrong with that but where it becomes maladaptive is where we start attempting unrealistic goals, where we tend to procrastinate out of fear, where we become people pleasers in order to be perfectionist, and, or we become highly sensitive to criticism or feedback, and we start to shape everything as failure-oriented instead of achievement-oriented. So... If you're somebody that's struggling with perfectionism, but you're on the maladaptive side, you could be wanting to have, you know, those like 
high standards and and having those setting high goals and feeling accomplished. But if you do it out of fear and you do it out of shame, that's not perfectionism. That is not a way to to be sustainable in your livelihood and and looking at life as just success or failure or looking at things as so, as so black and white does not leave room for growth. And I think it's really important to accept and embrace progress, but always remember that it's progress over perfectionism. It does not need to be, nothing needs to be perfect 100% of the time. And one thing that I've realized as a recovering perfectionist is that sometimes perfectionism is just self-sabotage in disguise. Sometimes perfectionism is just a way to limit ourselves. And it's untapped potential when you keep telling yourself that you're not good enough, when you don't even give yourself a chance to try. In addition to that, one thing that I learned when researching and learning about perfectionism is that perfectionism is actually a value of white supremacy. And there are multiple articles about how what what values of what are the values of white supremacy and one of them is perfectionism and when i realized that perfectionism has shaped the way that even as 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 a as people of color and as black people or people that have gone people of color specifically but we as those people we have endured so much social trauma historically we've gone through so much unlearning of those values and when i learned that perfectionism was a trait of white white supremacy white supremacy it completely shifted the way that i approach and handle mistakes or the messy parts and i mean there's a lot of historical evidence that goes with this and you can go back to you can you don't even need to go back that far but think about how enslaved people, how they were treated. If they didn't do something perfect, think about how they were treated. If they didn't do something that was completely flawless or they didn't do something that was, quote unquote, the way it was supposed to be, think about how they were treated. And then also think about how that gets passed down generationally. Think about how, you know, I think also with our our elders sometimes, especially when it comes to little things like how we dress or maybe our appearance or if you have a hair sticking out and your your hair slicked back more than likely your grandma's going to come and and try to fix it for you because they're they're used to that that perception of perfectionism especially in our appearance or think about how our generation now you know millennials or gen z folks we've embraced the kind of the messiness or we've embraced like you know, a messy look sometimes, but I don't necessarily feel like you don't have to always go alongside. You don't always have to go alongside your perception of what you think is perfect or what someone else thinks is perfect. It's about showing up for yourself regardless. And I think that for me, one thing that I've embraced, there's days where I don't feel my best. I don't look my best, but I always have to show love to myself no matter what. I personally, I like to get my nails done and, you know, I like to wear makeup and I like to dress up, but that's because it makes me feel good and it helps me to show up confidently. However, perfectionism being rooted in self-hate That is not going to help you to walk into a room and be confident. Perfectionism, if it's rooted in shame or it's rooted in failure or being highly sensitive, that's not going to help you to to land a great conversation or to do a sales pitch or to talk to someone that you love. It's really about embracing it with a softness and a sense of a sense of under of of compassion for yourself and unlearning perfectionism for me has been really healing. It's been a big part of my healing journey because as I've shared before, a lot of the perfectionism that I dealt with was around who I was as a person when I was in my early 20s and really hyper-focused on getting straight A's and doing really well in school and and you know being really competitive um, in that way. And unlearning that has helped me to 
become more soft and it's helped me to become more compassionate and be more graceful with myself and with other people. And one thing I just want to remind you is that perfectionism is a setback and don't let perfectionism get in the way of your creativity. Don't let your fear of looking stupid kill your creativity and your humanity. Perfectionism is a myth. There is no such thing as perfect. And once you understand and embrace that and acknowledge that, you can show up authentically as yourself so much more. So I want to give you some ways that I've learned to unlearn perfectionism. And some of those ways have been very simple. But number one is understanding that in life, there's hardly ever one right way to do something or how to accomplish something. And that goes for your love life. That goes for your career, your relationships, your creativity. I also want to point out, especially when it comes to relationships or um, friendships, you have to remember that somebody is not going to always have 100% of every single thing that you have in your head. And if you have an unrealistic standard or goal for your friendships or unrealistic standards for your relationships, I'm not telling you to settle. I do not think that you should settle. I think if you have certain things in your life that you absolutely need in a partner, you should go after that. However, what I'm not going to encourage is if you meet someone who meets almost all of those characteristics is completely shutting the door for that person just because they have one checkbox that's checkbox that's not checked off. And I, I think a lot of relationship therapists have actually shared the same sentiments because relationships are not perfect and and long term relationships are not perfect. Marriages are not perfect. And when you find someone that is showing up as their full selves and is committed to evolving and changing every day and growing and growing with you, that's important. It's it's not always about what we think is perfect in the moment. Number two would be to look at your mistakes and failures as the opportunity to grow and learn and embracing the plot twist of life. Now, when something happens in my life that is crazy or that's unexpected or unplanned, I'm just like plot twist. This is a plot twist, you know, in my story of of just being the main character of my life. And this is ties into what we've talked about in embracing your flop era and learning from your mistakes, your failures, and your losses and learning how to take L's gracefully. So check out that episode if you haven't already. But looking at your mistakes and failures as the opportunity to grow and learn, that really helps you to let go of that need for perfectionism in order for you to be motivated to get up and try again. Another way to unlearn perfectionism is to stop comparing yourself so much to other people and stop projecting your reality into what other people are experiencing. Surrounding yourself with people, first of all, that are going to remind you of who you are at your core is going to help you to let go of the that comparison mindset. One way that I have learned to deal with comparison or to limit um, comparison is to Um, remind myself and literally list out the qualities and traits about myself that I like, whether they're physical, whether they're non-physical. Most of the time I'm talking about the non-physical parts of myself that I love and remind myself every day why that is so unique and so special. In addition to that, you know, limiting your time on social media. One thing that I've realized is that with especially apps like TikTok or Instagram, where it's so easy to consume, mass media in in 30 minutes you could have watched hundreds of videos that's not our brain can't even process that much information at the same time so taking breaks from social media taking social media breaks learning how to just live offline and and not have to share everything if you don't want to share it and understanding that people's lives and experiences are unique to them and they're totally you know It's totally fine to share moments in your life that you're proud of, you're happy of. I love that. But I think also remembering that you are in your own lane, staying in your own lane and remembering who you are at your core 
that's going to help you to stop comparing yourself and competing with other people and trying to be perfect or trying to outdo them. And especially if it's just for appearances. One way that I've also learned how to deal with perfectionism is or unlearn perfectionism is using compassion with my self-talk. So using phrases such as you're doing your best and that is good enough or I do not have to be perfect to accept myself. Challenging negative self-talk and working on healing your inner child every single day through simple, joyous, filled activities that's really going to help you to tap into the part of yourself that is not a perfectionist and is just somebody who's very curious and open to all the possibilities of life. Another way that I've really, that has helped me to unlearn perfectionism is practicing mindfulness and acceptance every single day, radical acceptance and approaching my days like an a new opportunity versus it just being an extension of yesterday. So instead of me being like, oh, this is what I didn't do yesterday. I just have to carry it on today. I'm like, no, today's a completely new day. It's new energy. And, you know, after I meditate in the morning for 10 minutes or I go take a walk for half an hour and I have that clarity, I look at the day as brand new and an opportunity to, to do my best just for today not comparing my best to yesterday, just starting off every single day fresh and with a new mindset and accepting that every day you have an opportunity to show up authentically and fully as yourself. And last but not least, of course, if you are struggling or dealing with perfectionism and it's starting to affect your life on a deeper level and on a day-to-day basis and preventing you from moving forward and keeping you stuck, Consider talking to a counselor or a therapist about perfectionism and visit sadibaddies.com, our resources page for a list of directories on of therapy directories, guides, and other support tools. And of course, check out our post on perfectionism, which will be linked in the show notes. And yeah, I just want to remind you again that perfectionism is a myth. It's not real. Um don't waste so much of your life, especially your precious 20s or early 30s or wherever you are in life. Don't waste your life trying to be perfect or chase perfection when it doesn't even exist. And I think a lot of a lot of events in this world have shown us that this world is anything but perfect. So why are you trying to be perfect? Like, let's be for real for a second. If a lot of <laughs> the systems and structures in our in our world are crumbling right before our eyes, why are you holding on to perfectionism so much? And I'm not saying that in a nihilistic way or in a negative way. I'm saying realistically, if there are structures and forces in our in our world and in our society that are literally falling apart right before our eyes, what is perfectionism doing for you? It's just giving you a false sense of control. So releasing perfect perfectionism and unlearning it is the path to freedom. And I wish that for you and I wish that for everyone. So check out our show notes for links to our featured podcast episodes, as well as a last minute RSVP for the Webby Awards, which is happening today in just a couple hours. And stay soft. I will see you next week. To stay connected, join Sadi Baddies on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and more, and sign up for our monthly newsletter on SadiBaddies.com to stay in the loop. Sending you hella love and stay soft, baddie.